Therefore, it is time for member statements. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you, Speaker. It's with much appreciation that I thank the Greater Essex and County District School Board for their lengthy, now victorious fight to be allowed to tender projects fair and openly. Since 2001, the board has fought for their right to the highest quality work at the best possible price after being certified as a construction employer. A school board is clearly not a construction company, and yet certification has meant closed tendering, which restricts bidding while limiting competition. After three attempts by the school board to prove it met the definition of a non-construction employer, a recent Labour Board decision finally means the school board's construction projects are open to all qualified contractors. So, Area contractors, head over to the board website and start bidding as Greater Essex is open for business. And while we thank the board for their perseverance and persistence, their struggle for fairness only further highlights the flawed legislative loophole that allows school boards and municipalities to be certified in the first place. Since the Liberal government rejected my Fair and Open Tendering Act, the impacts of closed tendering continue to drive down competition in Hamilton, Toronto and Sault Ste. Marie, of course, in my region of Waterloo, while driving up costs for local infrastructure. That's why I'm here today to not only thank the Greater Essex and County School Board, but also to build on their efforts. I remain dedicated to restoring fair tendering for our public sector institutions, Speaker, and look forward to taking further legislative steps that will make it clear rules for construction companies should not apply to municipalities and school boards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, over the past few weeks, two independent officers of the Legislature, the Auditor General and the Environmental Commissioner, have reported on the Liberals' Climate Change Action Plan. Speaker, neither support the claim that the government's plan, as written, will allow Ontario to meet its 2020 target to protect us from dangerous climate change. And, Speaker, that's a big deal. We are approaching substantial climate tipping points that could put us at much greater peril. This is not a time to be playing games. Both the Auditor General and the Environmental Commissioner have serious questions about the viability and credibility of a number of the major programs that the Liberal Climate Plan claims will allow them to meet their targets by 2020. It appears the Liberal government is planning to paper over the gap between the story they tell and the reality by allowing the purchase of hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cheap carbon allowances from California and then saying that the job is done. Speaker, that strategy is irresponsible. It drains money from Ontario and, frankly, could discredit climate action in this province. I call on the Liberals to change their climate plans, to focus on real emission cuts in Ontario, and focus on protecting this province from dangerous climate change. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Scarborough Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about the recent basic income pilot consultation in my riding of Scarborough Aging Court. In 2016 budget, the government made a commitment to further address poverty in Ontario by committing to pilot a basic income for Ontarians. We are looking to test the view that a basic income could be a better way to deliver income supports while improving the health, housing and employment outcomes for Ontarians. The idea of basic income is generating immense interest both here in Canada and around the world. The Ministry of Community Social Services, in partnership with the Ministry responsible for Poverty Reduction Strategy, has begun consultation across Ontario to get feedback from people with lived experiences, municipalities, experts and academics. The consultation held in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court last Tuesday was the second consultation of 14 to be held. 78 people participated in this consultation, and to date, Mr. Speaker, basic income has received the most feedback ever seen during the consultation on Ontario.ca. Over 20,000 responses have been received on the survey online alone. I want to thank the Minister Ajasik and Minister Ballard for their leadership in implementing a new approach to inc improving income security. I also want to acknowledge the contribution of Lee Soda, her staff at Agent Corps Community Services Association, and the clients for participating in last week's uh, consultation. Mr. Speaker, I believe that working through uh, with organizations like Asian Corps Community Services Association and also the in looking into innovative approaches for delivering Thank supports, you. we can improve the lives of all Ontarians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Thank you and good afternoon, Speaker. Communities in my riding are seeking confirmation from the government on the continued stability of the provincial tax credit for the film and television, television industry in Ontario. You remember, may remember that in the 2014 budget, the government planned to change the tax credit, but on this side of the chamber, we fought hard to keep it in place. We worked with industry, won that battle, and a result, as a result, the film industry has reaped benefits across the province, particularly home in the north. <clears throat> Speaker, for example, just last week, a new production announced it would be coming to North Bay. This continued success is what prompted the municipalities of East Ferris and North Bay to each pass resolutions highlighting their concerns. Given their uncertainty in the government's commitment to the film and tel uh, television industry, these municipalities resolve that the Government of Ontario and the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport make a public commitment to the stability of the provincial tax credit system and the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund to ensure continued foreign and uh, domestic investment in Northern production, along with increased work opportunities for Northern Ontario residents of all ages and backgrounds. It is important that the government reaffirm confidence in the film and television industry and support continued growth in the sector. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Timiskimi Cochrane. Speaker, since this is the last my last member statement before the House rises, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone both here and at home a Merry Christmas. But even more importantly, I'd like to in advance, thank all those people who, while we are enjoying ourselves over the holidays, the people who work hard to keep us happy, healthy, and safe, all the people in the healthcare industry, uh, all the, all, and all, all, not only in healthcare, but uh, even in corrections, and all the people you don't think about, those people who, who, who work every, not only on the, during the holidays, but who work every day, but specifically during the holidays, and coming from an agricultural background, I would like to take this time to thank the farmers of Ontario, specifically the livestock farmers who on Christmas Day will be feeding, will be milking, will be doing all the things it takes to keep animals happy and healthy. And lastly, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank everyone who is on call on Christmas Day, be it a plumber, be it an electrician, be it a veterinary. Anyone who is on call, and we've all, I know in my business, I have had a few times the vet on Christmas Day pulling a calf, and it's, it's jolly, I can tell you, but there's both places, there was places that they would rather be. And it's, it's a great time of year, but we are protected by so many people in this province, and I'm happy to be able to recognize that. Thank you, Steve. Member from Brampton West. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm privileged to welcome Global Medic to Queen's Park today. Global Medic is a nonpartisan registered Canadian charity that runs capacity building programs in post conflict nations and provides disaster relief services to large scale catastrophes, both internationally and domestically. Their priority is to save lives by providing short term rapid response in wake of disasters and crisis, both at home and abroad. Global Medic is at Queen's Park today to package Welcome to Canada kits. These kits contain essential household and hygiene items that, that will be hand-delivered to families that have fled the violence in Syria and have, have newly arrived in Canada. The kits are to be packed by all of us here. I invite everyone to participate I invite everyone to participate in room 230 anytime during the day and spend some time to support this cause. This is a hands-on opportunity for all of us to support the newly arrived Syrian families and welcome them to our great province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I want to share with you a good news story from Westside Secondary School in Orangeville. Last month, I visited Westside as they held their 12th annual Think Pink fundraiser for the Breast Cancer Society's Canada's Dress for the Cure. Westside began holding Pink Day fundraisers in 2004 after several staff members were diagnosed with cancer. For the last number of years, Westside has been recognized as the top school fundraiser in all of Canada. This year was a special celebration because it marked their great accomplishment of raising over $100,000 since 2004. The students of Westside were packed into the gym and everyone wore a lot of pink to show their support. 
Brave students and staff raised hundreds of dollars by offering to shave their head or cut their um, hair. Some young men were even brave enough to have their legs waxed in public. It was a great afternoon as we cheered on students and staff, battled it out in a tug of war, but the biggest cheer of all was when we heard that Westside had raised an incredible $20,000 this year. Sometimes young people get accused of only caring about their Instagram accounts or their weekends. Westside Secondary School proved them wrong. Congratulations to Principal Wilson, the staff, and students of Westside for their fantastic work. Well done. Thank you, Deputy Member Stevens, the member from Kingston in the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What a thrill it was to once again join the St. Andrews Society of Kingston as they celebrated 176 years during their annual dinner, dinner on November the 20th. Guests were served with a traditional Scottish feast, which was not complete without a wee haggis, and many were dressed in kilts and other customary Scottish attire. As always, it was a festive gathering with engaging conversation and excellent company. Kingston welcomed an influx of Scottish immigrants, including my mother, seeking better opportunities to Canada following the Industrial Revolution. Founded in 1840, the St. Andrews Society began as a charitable organization to welcome Scottish newcomers and their descendants as they transitioned to life in Kingston. The Society continues to play an important role in supporting newcomers to Kingston, fostering a strong sense of community. St. Andrews Society has been rich, enriched by some famous and influential characters, including Sir John A. Macdonald, our first Prime Minister, and I have no doubt that our current members, like John and, of course, legendary Isabel Turner, who instills the fear of God into you if you can't attend a dinner, the Rutherfords, and so many other families who will likewise be remembered for their outstanding contribution to the society. Congratulations once again to the St. Andrews Society of Kingston for 176 years of Scottish cultural tradition in our city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, further member statements member from Wellington. Mr. Speaker. During my canvass of Wellington Halton Hills in the 2014 general election, I met thousands of people. I sought to answer their questions, listen to their concerns, and encourage their aspirations. One thing that I heard is that many of my constituents do not have access to affordable, reliable, high-speed internet. And we know that in today's economy, connectivity is an absolute necessity for households, farms, and businesses. When the House resumed immediately following the election to consider again the government's budget, I tabled a resolution urging the government to develop a strategy to ensure that all Ontarians would have access to affordable, reliable, high-speed internet and work with the Western Ontario Wardens Caucus and the federal government to achieve this goal with public-private partnerships. Exactly 24 months passed. Then this past July, the government announced a commitment to doing precisely what we had urged them to do, setting aside $90 million with an equal federal government contribution to support the Southwestern Integrated Fibre Technology Project, known as SWIFT. While it sounded good, they didn't announce a time frame for the launch or completion of the new and improved internet service, nor could they release a list of the 300 communities they claimed would benefit from the program. We all need to recognize the public interest in getting this done, working together to accomplish interim objectives and prerequisites, and this includes the private sector partners. I want to express my thanks to everyone involved with implementing this proposal, but let's keep it moving. The County of Wellington and the Town of Halton Hills are very enthusiastic about expanding access to affordable, reliable, high-speed internet. Let's get behind our local communities, and let's build a fibre network throughout rural Ontario that gives every Ontarian access to high-speed, affordable, reliable Thank internet you. service and all the benefits that technology entails. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm part of the member from Brampton West. Welcome uh, the hardworking Rahul Singh, who's the executive director of Global Medic. Thank you. I was, uh, I was just about to do that, so I uh, appreciate it. I've known Rahul for quite some time after his Order of Ontario that he received, so congratulations on that. 